like these to keep salt out of your diet. I'm talking about soups and french fries and pickles, right? But today, we have an eyebrow-raising food investigation into the secret the food industry doesn't want you to know. Salt bombs are hiding in foods you would never expect. Today, we reveal what they are, and we're giving you simple ways to kick your salt habit without sacrificing your flavor, and you're going to love. First up, I said Dr. Jennifer Caudill, who's on the front lines of the war on salt, to investigate. In my practice, I see salt sneaking into my patients' diets without them even knowing. Honestly, doctors have so little education in food, nutrition, and salt, which can lead to high blood pressure and heart disease, that I really felt like I needed to educate myself and other doctors on how to navigate this tricky world of salt. And it's not easy. Salt is everywhere. Americans consume too much of it. On average, 3,400 milligrams a day. Why? Because it makes food taste good. The food industry knows that and sneaks salt into all sorts of products to train our brains to crave foods. And it's not always obvious. Companies use tricks to make you believe you are eating lower calorie, healthier options while burying the salt. So the Dr. Oz Medical Unit did a large-scale nationwide investigation to look for unexpected salt sources, combing supermarkets, analyzing nutrition labels, and working with the scientists at the Center for Science and Public Interest. So I know your organization has been ringing the alarm bells about sodium in food for a long time. Can you tell me about that? The high salt content of the American diet is probably the single biggest problem with our diet. And because of that, CSPI has petitioned the Food and Drug Administration, we've sued the agency, we've harangued food corporations, and now we're finally beginning to see some progress. We also interviewed our core team member dietitian, Maya Feller. So tell me what concerns you most about Americans consuming too much salt. So the typical American diet is really full of sugar, fat, and salt. That's just what people are accustomed to. And this overconsumption of salt is really kind of wound up in that. They don't know what food tastes like without salt, and they also don't understand the risk factors of overconsuming salt. Diabetes, hypertension, other cardiovascular disease, and heart disease as well. And finally, we polled you, the Dr. Oz viewers, on Facebook to find out what you you're eating. Today, we're revealing the shocking hidden salt in your daily diet. So first, let's break through the confusion over how much salt we should be eating. So give us the numbers. Yeah, so according to the CDC, um, the average American adult eats over 3,400 milligrams of sodium every day. That is way too much. And in fact, the American Heart Association says we should be having less than 12, 2,300 milligrams of yep. sodium, yep. but ideally less than 1,500 milligrams of sodium. So many of us are eating double what we should be eating. So break it down to the actual amounts. How, how many yeah. teaspoons is 2,300 milligrams? So it's actually one teaspoon, which we have here. So you can get sort of an idea of it. We sort of top this off. A teaspoon is really what we have for about 2,300 milligrams of sodium. So, you know, it's, it's something that we need to keep in mind. It's something that um, we can certainly live within our means. We've got to hey be guys, careful. this is a lot of salt. You can live with that much salt, don't you think? <laughs> Right? I mean, you would never add that much salt during your day. At least I would never That's think true. of it. Most people right? don't. Yeah. Most That's the problem, isn't that. it? Right. Because the reality is the majority of the salt in our diet isn't coming from our hands going like this. Right. It's coming from food that's, that has salt already. 75%, three quarters of all the salt is not what you're putting on your food. It's what comes hidden in the food. The example I gave earlier is just the top, tip of the iceberg, That's but there's right. more. There's a type of salt yeah. issue here, too. Yeah. Not just the amount, but the type. And I'm, I'm so glad we're talking about this. The type of salt does matter. This is something called flake salt. And I like it because it's almost like snow in a way. But each, yeah, it feels really nice, actually. Yeah. It's um, more granular. It is very granular. Each sort of flake, though, is the shape of a pyramid, which we have here. It's got flat sides. It allows it to stick to food better. Um, but manufacturers say that this type of salt really makes uh, food taste even saltier maybe than some other salts. It gives us a little bit of a crunch and it dissolves well. Now that's in contrast to what we have, you know, what we were talking about over there, which is the table salt. What we put in our salt shaker, the, the, the um, shape of the molecule is more of a cube. So there's a difference there. So solid cube, hollow pyramid. When this touches your tongue, let's pretend this pink is yeah. your tongue, right? And what, what happens if you put salt in your mouth? You salivate, right? Yeah. Because it tastes good. It does. Right? So as you begin to pour uh, saliva, saliva on the salt, it begins to dissolve. Now, it does dissolve regular salt, too, but it makes a much bigger difference than you would imagine. Notice how much faster this shaped salt dissolves compared to, this thing is still slowly making its way down. Right. 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 
And so by the time you're done, there's nothing left here. Now that rapid boost you're telling me, if I get this right, hits our brain faster. So we actually crave the foods with this kind of snowflakey salt even more. Yeah, it's, um, it, it definitely can change how we taste foods absolutely. It can make a difference. In many ways. So the type of food and the type of salt, they tend to marry each other. Manufacturers do this because why? More cravings equals more profits. Let's be clear about this. There's not evil people doing this. They're trying to make a living, but this is a simple, easy way of dosing the food a little differently so they can get you on there. Once you're addicted to these foods, you just keep eating them, which is about why so many folks have a difficult time cutting back. So let's get to the results of this huge investigation uh, that we're presenting today. Largest ever done on this topic for us. So we broke down food into three major salt bomb categories. The yes. first secret salt bomb secret is salt bomb. breakfast foods and baked foods. Yeah. I mean, I look at this and I see sugary sweet stuff. Why, right? why, why would I put salt in a cake? Well, the interesting thing is salt actually makes sugar taste sweeter. And it can actually make our cookies taste crunchier, interestingly. I, I didn't know that. And that's, so salt is really important for baked goods. And bread, this is the thing, honestly, this is the thing that shocked me. A slice of bread can have up to 600 milligrams of sodium. If you have three slices or four slices yeah. of bread in a day, it can put you to the max of your sugar. Just that? Day. Yep, it can. A whole teaspoon of salt. Uh, it, if you eat three, four, sometimes five slices of bread, yeah, and just in bread, and people don't think about that. Right. Next big secret salt bomb, again, you wouldn't expect this either. It is? Juice. Yeah, this is so. This is vegetable juice, and we say, "Oh, I'm going to drink vegetable juice because I'm going to be healthy." And yes, you are being healthy because veggies are great. But this is a secret salt bomb because, interestingly enough, about a cup of vegetable juice can have up to 800 milligrams of sodium per serving. If you have two servings, two cups, that's doubling that. Okay, and the last secret salt bomb. I don't think anyone in this audience, as smart as you are, would have gotten. Are you ready? It's something you do to be healthy all the time. Yeah. Boneless, skinless chicken breast. Yeah. Why? Yeah. How, this is before it's cooked, you're saying? This is even before it's cooked. And look, a lot of times the chicken breast is pumped up with like a salt water solution to make it juicier and to make it sort of right. more appetizing to us when we cook it. And that's what gives this the high salt content. So it really has more sodium than we actually think. You know, here's what's getting me, guys. You eat healthy, right? You're trying. You oh, have your yeah. skinless... Uh, uh, skinless chicken breast, yeah. Not fried. Right. right. Well, you we're, put, not, we're not going to fry it. Right. We'll, put it we'll, we'll bake it. Bake it, yes. right. Put it in some wheat bread, right? 100% whole wheat bread. And what are you stuck with? A sodium. salt bomb. Sodium. Yes. So we're going to put the full list of salt bombs for the foods you should not be eating as readily on naturalize.com. Now, yes. Lucas and Marsha are two self-described salt addicts who are dating and I understand soon to get married. Is oh, that right? Two weeks. Oh, two, weeks. Yes. two weeks. So this could actually be a problem for you. This could be a big issue. So I want us to understand this dynamic. You guys apparently love salt so much, you actually quibble over the salt shaker. We do. Yep. We adds. actually do. He adds to my cooking. Uh, you know, I, I, I try to absorb as much salt as, you know, I, I take it in. I, He's salty. I'm salty. <laughs> I'm a salty one. Well, that's why you love him. But, but I understand there's a, a health concern you have over Lucas and his family. I, I do. So high blood pressure runs in his family. Unfortunately. And I also, we're very, very active. So we go hiking a lot mm -hmm. and we blow up. I notice a difference. Uh, once we get you know, a few miles into the hike, uh, we start swelling up if we had a salty breakfast. Yep. Mm. And so I've cut back uh, before doing any uh, activity, physical activity. So you've come to the right place. I know it's not easy to do. <laughs> there are many families, we hear this all the time, who fight over salt. Either they don't want it added or they both want it. You're going to have to work that out in your relationship. This may start today because yes. Dr. Carl has come up with a salt eater's guide to reducing salt without losing flavor because I know that's important to both yeah. of you. Yes, yes absolutely. absolutely. So if the first step is to drink a mineral boost juice. Yeah. This is not what you may think, but it will help you eat less salt. So walk us through. Absolutely. So what we want to do is make sure we're getting proper nutrients, especially minerals. And potassium is the key one here because potassium actually is it's kind of nice. It actually helps lower blood pressure by blunting the effect of sodium on the body. And I know you mentioned that you're, you have a family history of high blood pressure, so it can be very helpful in that way. Um, this is a smoothie that I really, really like. like potassium rich foods galore here. We've got coconut um, water, we've got avocado, we've got uh, banana and spinach, um, and we have two straws for you guys to try. But this can be a really great smoothie to try um, first thing in the morning just to get a lot of nutrients and also to get a, a good daily supply of potassium as well. Absolutely. Yeah, well, give it a yeah, shot. If you don't like it, you're not going to eat it. I can definitely try it. Well, they're two for I think a reason. I'll be a little selfish with this, okay? <laughs> Even with the other straw, you won't share? Marsha. So, 
I'm kidding. Okay, you're very too good. If you need to shake your salt habit like Lucas and Marcia, then listen up because Dr. Jen calls back with the rest of the salt eater's guide. Reducing salt without losing flavor. The next step is to substitute your salt. There are these new low sodium salts. That's what they're called low sodium salts on the market. Yeah, you've looked into them. Yeah. I'm always worried it's too good to be true. But what, what, first of all, what are they and what are your yeah. concerns? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a skeptic like that too. So this is called low sodium salts. Really, what these are, they're like salt substitutes. Mm -hmm. They're on grocery store shelves and things like that. I know many of us have seen them. They really lower the amount of sodium in the product and add potassium instead. So you get almost a salty flavor, but it's less sodium. Um, and I honestly, I think for many people, most people, this is probably actually a good option. Of course, the best option is just to not eat salt, but this can be a good substitute. There are some people who should watch their potassium intake, heart problems, kidney problems. You gotta talk to your doctor first because this substitutes potassium. But for most people, um, I think this is a, actually a good option. They're cousins, right? Yeah. So, sodium and potassium, yep. so they can they, sort of replace each other. They hang out together. They hang, they together. hang out together. <laughs> <laughs> now, one thing is, they, I find they don't have quite the same flavor. Yeah. So some folks will think this is a you know, free card to get out of jail, so they just pour tons of it in there. So be thoughtful about that. All right. So I challenged my friend, Dr. Roizen, and the nutritionist at the Cleveland Clinic, Kristen Kirkpatrick, to guess to us what to give us a list of the best options for increasing flavor in food without adding salt. Here's their recommendation. The key to replacing salt is to focus on three flavor profiles. The first is going to be smoke. So smoke adds a depth of flavor, so you won't be missing the white stuff. And it's really easy to add smoke to any dish. I do it by adding in smoked Whoa. paprika. Super smoky and really delicious. And the second? So the second is spicy. When you have spicy foods, it actually overwhelms the palate. So you're not looking for extra flavoring you normally would get from salt. I love cayenne pepper. I actually add it to so many of my foods and you just need a little bit to get the taste that you're looking for. Wow, that's really spicy and really good. New case studies have found that people who ditch the salt and replace it with extra lemon in their prepared food love it. Garlic combo will give you the phytonutrients and taste joys that will make you forget salt. And that will help you keep your arteries healthy and elastic. That lowers your blood pressure and maintains it low. Happy, Happy shaking! So look at the Marsha at our popcorn bar we have created. There are three flavor substitutes. Keep tasting and enjoy them. Let me walk you through these. At the Cleveland Clinic identified these as being good replacements for salt. We talked about smoky paprika. Talked about cayenne pepper to make these a little spicy. I got one more tip that I've learned from eating with Mike. It's one of his favorites. It's an Italian gremolata. The key here is the acidity in the lemon. Studies have shown that people actually preferred food when lemon replaced some of the salt. So you guys have given it your shakedown. What do you think about the taste? Mm, so far, I think the smoky is. I like the acidic one. The acidic mm. one's great. Uh, yeah, I mean, no, is she wrong for me. liking the smoky or just different? Just different. Very smart. <laughs> <laughs> Grab someone, take them over to the audience. I want you guys to taste them. Come on over. There's lots of options for you guys to taste. I want you to enjoy these or give us a taste. See, and be honest here. Pass them around. You guys happy? I'm gonna throw these at you. And make you all spicy. Enjoy them. Yeah, good? Good? There are lots of good ways to replace salt. And lots more to talk about. We'll be right back.